Hey, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to find the application version in your Android and iOS native script application. Uh, so we're going to do a few things here. Um, the most important part of this tutorial is we're going to see how to find that application version by accessing native platform APIs and features. So we're actually going to use native script to interface with native Android Java and then um, iOS Objective-C. So that it's the point of this is to show how easy it is to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and start by using our terminal. Let's go ahead and create a new native script project. So let's go ahead and do that on our desktop. So let's say TNS create example project. All right, let's navigate into that uh, new directory that was created. And now we're going to say TNS platform add iOS. And it's important to note that if you're not using a Mac like I am, you cannot add and build for iOS. You need a Mac in order to build for iOS. Uh, but you can use Windows, Linux, or Mac to build for Android, which we're going to do right now. TNS platform add Android. All right, perfect. So now our project now has uh, both iOS and Android. So we can go ahead and open it. It should be on your desktop. And now we're going to just, um, everything we need is inside of our app directory. So go ahead and open up your project. Let's go ahead and close that out. We'll start fresh here. All right, so we have our project open. Uh, where we want to start is we're actually not going to start with um, any of the files in our project because we want to go ahead and, and first understand the native code that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to just open up a, a, new, a new document. Uh, we're not going to use it in the long term, it's just to demonstrate. Uh, so to actually get the application version in Android, you need to make use of the package info and package manager uh, classes. So in Android, you might do something like this. Import Android content.pm.package info. And you would also import uh, android.content.pm.package manager. So with those two classes, then you would use them like, like the following in Android. This is Android only to start. We're going to look at iOS next. So you'd say something like package info. And then let's say, just call it that, equals get application context. And then you'd say something like uh, get package manager. And then get package info, get application context again, because we're trying to get the context of whatever activity we're in. Uh, and then we would say, uh, dot get package whoops get package name package manager and that would be get meta data and then you could of course say uh, let's go ahead and print it out system dot out dot print line uh, package in whoops don't know why I have quotes there package info dot version code so that whoops I don't want to save it actually so uh, this uh, would be what what it would typically look like in Android if you're using native Android code um, and then similarly this is what it would look like for iOS I'm just going to use the same file uh, it would look something like this it's a lot shorter for iOS so it'd be ns string and then version equals ns bundle main bundle object for oops object for info dictionary key and then we'd say at uh, because it's a string here and we're saying cf bundle short version string and with that we can just print it out so it'd be something like ns log at and then percent at comma version. So a lot a lot shorter for, for iOS, um, but 
in reality for both Android and iOS, it's not particularly hard. I actually found both of these examples just in a simple Google search. Uh, so if you don't if you don't know how to do something in one of the native languages, you could always rip something off of Google, um, and then we're going to convert it into native script right now. So to start, go ahead and navigate into your main page.js. We can actually leave a lot of this here. What we want to do first is we want to uh, include another dependency here. We want to say var application equals require and then application. And this is going to allow us to access that application context that we saw in uh, this raw Android example. So we've included that. Now what we want to do is we want to create a new function. So let's say exports dot get version equals function args and then we won't we won't populate this function yet uh, first we want to go ahead and go into the XML so that way we can call it uh, but before we do that let's go ahead and strip away some stuff so we don't this is a simple example we don't need these labels we actually want to change this tap event to, to point to get uh, version the function that we just created and then we can save it. So we're done with our XML. It's just a button on the screen. That's it. So going back into our get version function of the main page.js file, uh, now we can start adding some logic. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to say var page equals args.object. And of course, you could still use uh, the one from page loaded. It's up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and define it again. And I'm going to say if page.android because remember, we're using two different pieces of code for both of the platforms. So we're going to say else. So if Android else, it's, we're, going to, we're going to consider it to be iOS. Um, because as of right now, I believe in native script, Windows is still beta. So for the Android part, this is what we want to do. We want to say var package manager equals Android dot content.pm.packageManager and let's save that. Now notice this line here. If I go back into that untitled document, all we're doing is we're setting that to be a variable. So we've just set it to be a variable. So now we can actually use it the same way we would with native Android. So going down the line here, let's say var, uh, let's say pkg equals application dot Android dot context dot get package manager dot get package info application dot Android dot context dot get package name and then uh, what we would do is we continue down the line so we can say package manager dot get metadata so let me save that now notice this line this line is is near identical to what we saw here uh, the difference being that instead of get application context we used the uh, let me find that page again we used the application Android context and then we called get package manager uh, so it's essentially the same thing. It's uh, we're we're just breaking it down, um, but it in reality it wasn't it wasn't difficult. So with that package, let's go ahead and display it to the user. And the, the easiest way to display it to the user would be to just show an alert to the user. So let's say alert, and let's say title. Let's say uh, version, and then the message, uh, because it requires a string here and we're returning a integer we have to convert it into a string first so what we can do is we can access that uh, native Java or native Android class uh, and that would be Java dot lang dot integer and then we, we, we can call the to string function of that and we can say uh, pkg dot version code and then for our OK button, let's just say close. Perfect. So that, that is the Android portion. Uh, not too difficult. It's, it's pretty, pretty similar to what we saw 
for native Android. Uh, and we were able to access all of that directly with JavaScript. That's the beauty of native script here. We can access all of this Java and Android stuff directly uh, without having to truly know the Android programming language uh, because, of course, you, you, you could just rip that off of Google and then just replace a few things and you'd be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do the iOS part now. So let's say var version equals ns bundle. So we're, we're really, in this one, in this part, the hardest part here is actually uh, knowing how to convert from that bracket notation of a, that objective C offers into more of a dot notation. So it's going to be ns bundle dot main bundle dot object for info dictionary key and hopefully I didn't make any typos here we'll find out probably in a moment cf bundle short version string perfect and now we can actually just show another alert so I'm going to copy this line here I'm going to paste it in this time uh, we're just going to change the message here the message is now just going to say version because it's already going to be a string for us so let's go ahead and save it. With that saved, now we're going to go ahead and run it in our simulator. So go back to our terminal here. Uh, what we want to do is let's go ahead and start with Android. So let's say TNS run Android. And that'll, that'll start building it. And let me pop open my simulator here. All right, so it loaded it, and hopefully if there's no typos, when I hit this tap button, it'll show an alert with our version. I tapped it, and yes, so it says version 1, and version 1 actually comes from our manifest here. So if I, I didn't open it here, but let's, uh, let's see if I can minimize this and open up example project and go back a level. So platforms, Android, uh, let's find... Um, it might be in build gradle if it's not if it, it's in uh, the manifest uh, so let's just let's just look at the manifest file it'll be easier all right so here's the version code one so it matches up so let's go ahead and now try to do the same thing for iOS so let's say let me kill this we're gonna say TNS run iOS emulator All right, so our iOS simulator is up, and if I tap it, hopefully I didn't do any typos, so tap, and it shows us the version code of 1.0. So you really, you really saw how easy it was to use native code inside of our native script application, and that, that will save you a ton of trouble in your development journeys, uh, because of course, not everything is gonna ship with native script out of the box. You're gonna have to use plugins, you're gonna have to add your own code if this if these plugins don't already exist for you, at least now you know that it's not difficult to make your own.